uh, it's screw retained. Um, and if we click the button, we get to the screen where it's showing our indications. So we're coping, we can select the, the material. And so what, 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 when, when they mean by this is over the final restor restoration, what zirconia, what material you're gonna be using. So for us today, we're gonna be using HT plus. Uh, the mill is our motion two. Um, and then we have parameters and options. So it's asking, do you have a pre-op model? Are you scanning the gingiva separately? Uh, implant based, we're using screw retain. And then design gingiva, yes. And this is very important that we select that we're designing thimbles, especially if you're used to using our MGM module and our gingival module. And normally you won't see this, but we're designing thimbles. So you want to check box, yes. Um, material shade will leave no color. And I'll click OK. And then so what we would do is go around to each one and select what we're doing. So as you notice, our implant locations are 3, 6, 8, 11, and 15. In between there, we're, put, we're selecting reduced ponics. And then, of course, on our lowers, we have our antagonist mark, marked. Also on the screen, you'll notice uh, scan mode. So we're going to do two stone models with our Artex um, virtual articulator module. You still have the, if you don't have our Artex, you can still say, you can still put in different articulators uh, and different options for design. Impasse is our Zebras uh, jaw motion function, which I'll, I'll, I'll give an example um, later on throughout the, uh, the presentation. Okay, so we have everything set. Uh, any questions so far? This is just the main screen telling the system what we're going to be uh, fabricating. So we'll save it. I'm going to go to the design since we already have the scans. We're going to start from the beginning. <clears throat> this is also a good time to um, check and make sure your locations are correct. Your implant locations, your scan bodies are in the right position, your gingiva. Uh, you don't want to get deep into design and then find out something's off. So what I kind of do is I, I, I look around and I make sure everything's correct. And then we're going to go straight to our wizard. So the wizard or virtual articulator is the first step. So we're going to start articulator. So for our MAP 600, we would put this in the articulator and scan this entire relationship. We're going to leave the gap, of course, because there's no T. But we're going to, uh, we would put that entire articulator in there. Um, if you had our zebras, which is our digital face bow, as well as jaw movement, uh, this would all be automated and transferred in. Uh, currently, right now, I have default average anterior guidance. Um, we do have options for additional articulators if you're using different ones, but we're going to use our average anterior guidance. And now you see the settings are, are the average settings, bend and angle 10 degrees, condylar angle 35 degrees. We're going to start articulator movement. And while this is locking in, what it's doing is virtually going through those, those standard or average anterior guidance settings. Um, the next step in accuracy is actually recording the digital face bow and the jaw movement of that patient. Um, you, you would be amazed the difference between standard settings and the actual movements, how much that varies, uh, which is really, you see the difference in these really large cases. But for now, we're going to use the virtual because that, the zebras, that's a whole other module that we'll do. So you notice over here, articulator movements have finished. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to zoom in. Up here, now I have the articulator movement. So right now it's not really a big deal, but I wanna show you while everything's out of the way. I can go through the movements by using the slider here to rotate through all the functions. Okay, so we'll go next. 
if we were going to use a smile creator this is where in the workflow it would be added but we're not going to do that right now we'd be here for two hours instead of an hour so we'll follow the wizard and the wizard says to detect implant position so on tooth number three i have a toggled on favorites that's a if you're using our system and you're used to this i really like the favorites button because um i if i go to full library i have a lot of different libraries right i got a couple gig of different implant libraries that i've added you can download more libraries but if you're using a certain one all the time you can actually click it on and designate it as a favorite so then when you go to favorites that's the only one you have to cycle through and it's ready to go. So I'm going to minimize this just for a second to utilize that initial screen where I have my list of my abutments. Very important. I've had customers go halfway through this, then realize they picked the wrong size and want to change it. So I always stress, make sure you check this at the beginning to get the right implant. So we're at number three, I'm gonna drop down and it is SR kit B 4.5 and with a height of four millimeters. And I have the dot here, that's why I wanna click on the scan body. Another question I get is what is this for? What, 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 I, what this bar is used for is if it's missing a quarter of the data on your scan body, you can remove that so the scan doesn't try to copy bad data. So I always tell them eliminate it. If there's, if there's just a, you know, you get a scan body in and there's a lot of, um, lot, lot of missing data, just cut that out so the computer won't even look for it. And then when you hit that button, you'll notice it'll be, it'll be closer before you hit best fit matching. So now I have a match. Let's go next. We go to the next tooth, which is tooth number six. So six is kit A, 3.5 with a height of three millimeters. So the next two are the same. So let's rotate across. We go number eight. And now 15, <clears throat> we are, we switch over, we switch back to kit B. And four millimeters. Okay, so let's go back to the main screen. Now we can mark the emergence profile. There's two trains of thought on that. Um, some of our, some designers don't mark this um, and they skip ahead. Uh, you, and there's, there's two trains of thought to that. Some want, it, some want this defined and they want that pressure uh, against that tissue. Uh, others do not want that. It's a it's a personal preference thing. What I'll do is we'll mark one. Let's just do uh, number six, and then I will not mark the others, and you guys can see the difference. I usually show when I train. I show both both versions, and um, usually the customers that are that are that are adding they want to they want to make their own uh, emergence or adjust it. So we'll skip through these other ones. Okay, very important right here. So this first step, um, it's a, you, you wanna change the library to the Knut Miller. So I'm gonna go over to advanced mode, load custom teeth, and we'll pick a tooth mill, uh, Knut Miller library. Uh, we'll do rectangular. 
So I'm gonna load all that and now it's gonna put that new library in. The reason why is I wanted to show you guys the cutback. There's a, there's a special Knut Miller cutback library. And so we need to select that library to have that option. Okay, now the fun, we're gonna position this. So, of course, there's multiple ways to look at this. I, I, I start off in chain mode before I go to simple because I wanna put it in a general location. Let's move that down. I get it close and then I can make some other movements, but I wanna make sure that's centered. So if you see, I have the translucency of my antagonist. Let me take that off for a second. All right, let's bring it to the front. And again, we can be here <laughs> all day fixing this, but I really, mainly I wanna show you the tools, but I am gonna get it pretty close. So once I get it generally close is when I then can move to um, the single function and bring these down individually where I need them placed. So, for example, if I want to adjust this, I move over to simple. I can rotate this and put it in position. Let's let's say I needed to move the whole thing over. I can go back to chain mode and they have a tube function. So if this was, let's say I'm shifting and I needed to needed to move this to line up um, my midline. So I go to tube. I just hold left click. Let me uncheck these and I can rotate the whole thing over. If I needed to stretch this back some, I'm gonna hold this part here. That's what the red, red dot's for. Then I can grab this and I can only move those ones. So it lets you really, there's a lot of tools that we go in depth on um, in maneuvering and positioning and just generic, you know, positioning of these, these restorations. But utilizing these, you can really maneuver multiple teeth and get to where you need to be faster to get that design where you want. Uh, I'm gonna, let me go here, just rotate this a little bit. One of the tricks I like to use is, um, Let's turn off the antagonist for a second. What I'll do is I'll use the grid behind me as sort of my, my uh, midline and as a guide. So I'll get eight and nine lined up where I need it. Right over here, these custom views. I can add a custom view. I can name rename this front. What's nice about that is now as I'm moving around and I'm adjusting these, I can quickly go to front and it takes me right back where I need to be lined up. So let's look at it from the top, take off the antagonist. Move this a little bit out. Okay. Like I said, we can be here all day designing this. I just want to get it close and get you guys the tools, show you the tools. So mainly here is, is chain mode, simple mode. 
getting where you need to be. Um, if I wanted to bring that over a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's go next. Generating my crown bottoms. As you notice, uh, with our software, it's not trying to attach to an implant site because it's going to be one restoration with gingiva. So you don't have to worry about if you're in between two, if one's going to reach over, it's going to stay exactly where you place it. Um, for the crown bottoms, the one I was showing you that I lit up, you can actually go in here, which again is another module, so I won't go too deep. Thomas, one of our, our lead trainers, has a really nice video on our web channel, uh, YouTube channel, where you can maneuver this to fit your gingiva exactly where you need it. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can measure the tension. You can measure the pressure that you want on the gingiva. So let me light up the gingiva here. So you can really customize this relationship between the abutment and the gingival tissue. So next on this screen, we can freeform uh, and adapt. So right now I can, let's say I have some, some, some high spots. I can go over here, remove that a little bit. I always like to remove these pretty low uh, before I cut. Of course, the more, the, the, the deeper the color, this is like the weather channel. So red is a real bad thunderstorm. That's going to make an aggressive cut when you adapt. Um, but you notice when, you, when it's in the blue and I cut some minor movement. So I, actually, I have a little wear for set right there. Let's go next. So at this part of the um, workflow is it's going to make a block out model of our design. Uh, what's really cool is if you if you have a saw uh, section model like this, I can actually freeform and smooth this up. And I will I'll show you once once this is done creating um, the bottom of the uh, it's it's literally it's basically a block out model digital block out model. But then if you notice when I turn here. The saw marks are still there. So we're going to take this after it's through and actually smooth it out. Um, we got about a minute or two while this calculates. So if there's any questions right now, this is a good time that we can uh, we can answer those so far. No, we don't have we don't have any questions yet. No questions. OK. All right. Um, so it, yeah, it does. It, it takes a little while because it's it's literally looking at every single uh, undercut on the cast to make sure uh, there's no interferences. Um, so once that's finished calculating, we'll go to freeform here and actually use our brush and, and I'll smooth up some of that, some of that data. This is also a good time to make sure you see our abutment locations. Um, making sure they're in the correct position. There we go. So now that that's created, you can go, oh, it's almost done. Go back. I think I hit, I hit forward too fast. I can go to freeforming. And it's going to give me the ability to smooth. So I can, let's say we got this rough area here. I can smooth that up. Or these lines, because I know the patient doesn't have that. The patient, in reality, is smooth gingiva, not our sawed models. So I can smooth those locations. I'm not worried about 
anything below. So at the time, you know, you have to keep in mind when you're designing, don't waste time on areas that, you, you know, are not going to be involved in the final restoration. For example, this rough area down here has nothing to do with the REACTS um, prostheses because it'll be here on the top part of the gingiva. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> so now on the wizard, you see it's uh, we're on uh, gingival design. So what we do is we'll start here and we're just going to make our border. I tend to go a little farther uh, out than what I think I need and move it in as opposed to um, having to build it uh, too short and have to add. It's just easier um, to build it, to, to smooth up and, and remove material, excess material. So now this is building uh, the gingival part. There's my initial indication. If I had, so I'll show you one thing. One, one, one way to adjust this is I can take that ball and move this in and adjust my design. And then I have to hit apply and run it again. I don't normally do that, just to me it wastes time because I can smooth this in the next step anyway. And and you save time rerunning re this, uh, generating the gingival all over again. So you can see, even though I moved it a little bit, I'm running through this whole step, which is why I don't even do that normally. But I wanted to show you that you can adjust these and then run it again. Okay, so we're gonna, now we're on to free forming. Um, two trains of thought here. If you're going to add a lot of gingival, uh, gingival material, um, you wanna keep this smooth. Don't worry about uh, a lot of festooning and, um, and, and, and spending a lot of time here. You just want it nice and smooth. You want your embrasures filled. So I'm gonna show you a couple tricks either way so like let's say you see this ginger is sticking out a little bit I'm a, i can go to a small region i can grab that and i can tuck that in or you see this one is is a little it's filled but it's still it's not smooth so i can go to free and blend that in a little better so here if I hold shift, it has more of a flattening function. And you see just a couple of clicks and that'll that'll blend in a lot better. Now, if you notice my boundary, I went a little farther here. So what I'm gonna do is right here, it says keep boundary fixed. I'm gonna uncheck that. And let's bring my brush down a little bit. And I can, lift this and paint this exactly where I want. So there's, with our tools, it's just like design tools. You, um, adjusting the gingiva, you have multiple ways to do this. If I wanted to do huge region and lift this, I can lift it. Um, it just depends on how, how, how you guys uh, wanna do it. I'll show, like I said, I'll show you both ways. Let's move this up. Add a little more strength. Uh, 
and smooth the gingival material. This area here, I would just add to bring that tissue up a little bit. And follow back up with smoothing it. And again, don't worry about spending too much time on this area. You just want to make sure there's nothing like completely out of place um, because we're going to be able to smooth that up in free form once we create our thimbles. And the software will actually adjust a lot of that for us. All right. So that doesn't look too bad. Let's go here in the front. Maybe add a little bit right here. And smooth. So you know now I'm getting we're getting a little preview of our thimbles. Um, on this drop down. We selected thimbles, um, so it'll give you the, actually what's nice about it, it's the perfect prep for us already made. Um, the, the adjustment in our software, the improvement in our software at this point, you, before we'd have to manually adjust all this to the correct height to match the uh, gingival margin. But for us, we don't have to do that. The software, I'll show you how the software automatically does that for us. So free forming. You have to resist the temptation and start adjusting this because if we look at our anatomical shapes, it looks like you know this is way too short and you want to move this. That's not the time. You don't have to worry about that. Our software will do it for us. So we're going to hit next. Um, this stage adapting ponics, we don't have to adapt ponics to the gingiva. The gingiva is already one solid piece. So it has no relationship with the ponic. So we can go next. Shrinking of the gingiva is, it depends on how you finish this restoration. Um, and we'll, we'll, uh, I'll show you some of the options here. So if you're gonna do this in full zirconia, um, you may reduce this more because you need more room for your porcelain material to go over it, your pink porcelain, your gingival porcelain. Uh, if you're doing this in uh, peak or some other hybrid materials, um, Maybe you don't reduce as much. Uh, it just depends. I just that that's one of those artistic side of this the, of creating these. Um, is, 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 but for us, what's important for us at AG is we give you the options. So you have the ability. Let's say I don't want to shrink anything. I can mark all and apply, and it doesn't shrink that at all. Or I can control how deep I want to shrink. Um, how deep I want it. The nice thing about that is if I shrink to 0.4, it's going to be 0.4 all over. Um, so when I add my porcelain material, it, it's one even thickness of, of material that I'm adding. So we'll do no shrink right now just to show you the difference. All right, let's go next. So here we're gonna get to our design our thimble substructure. So if you if I move around, you can see where the outline of where it's gonna be, but it's still gonna make some adjustments. So we're gonna do design thimble substructure right now. It's giving me the first tooth. If I need to adjust the margin, it automatically picked the margin. But of course, if I need to make one, let's say we wanted to adjust this right here, I can move that down, fix that margin. Go next. It's showing me where it is in reference to the implant, but that's okay because remember, once again, it's going to be all one piece of 
zirconia or peak or whatever hybrid material we're using. So we'll go next. And I'll save it. Well, it's going to keep repeating the same steps over every crown. Let me zoom out so you can see that. Which, what's nice about this is if I once I create this and I have these preps, I can take uh, more aesthetic material. So, for example, let's say I want to use the strength of our Gen X, our HT Plus for the framework, but then I want the beauty of the FX for my individual units. You basically are doing a full arch of FX zirconia, multi-layer zirconia on top, giving you a beautiful restoration. So as you see right here, this is going back to our single unit design, where now these are treated as crown bottoms. Uh, if, I, if you want to change anything, you can treat this like your regular single unit workflow by going through each step. creates our crowns. Takes a little while, but you got to remember, it's basically making our crowns for us for a full arch, um, according to those positionings that, that I put in in the beginning. Um, these, though, I did reduce, so it's going to give me the option to make uh, cutback. And I'm going to show you the cutback, which is our, our Knute Miller cutback, uh, which is really popular with our customers who already have this, this system um, because they're able to um, have a cutback and basically layer your layer and enamel in those sections. So we're going to skip through here. So it gives me freeform gingiva again. The reason why is for a couple locations, and I'm glad we had a few. See this, see this area right here? That's the, that's where we want to adjust and bring that up. So I can grab this. I just want to hide that. So anywhere you see that, it's where the gingiva is a little short. We just want to give it. It's like hiding the margin on a abutment. Um, it's the same thing. We want that gingival ma material to cover that margin. So here. See, this is short. Bring that up. Bring that down. We want to make sure these are our linguals are not too high. So I'll bring that down a little bit and then let's go to smooth. I'll go back to my front view. Let's go next. 
So now I get to decide if I want to do full contour crowns, uh, but I want to show you guys the cutback. Or you know what? Let's let's have some fun with this. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to block out the the molars. So this is let's say you decide uh, you don't want to do cutback. You want to do full contour um multi-layer in the posterior i can highlight these teeth because what i'm doing now is painting and telling where i don't want um don't want the cutback so on my cutback now i can drop down and select what type of cutback um let's let's pick labial supported. So now if you look at this, oh, I see one more spot I need to paint. There we go. So if you look at this, you can see what the cutback's gonna look like before you reduce. So let's apply. And I've had to do this manually many times. I, I can tell you it's really nice uh, once we got this cutback library to have that generated automatically for us. So as you see now, I have the cutback here. I have the full contour in the posterior. Uh, my bicuspids, I can you know add porcelain for a full layering. But this right here, I can tell you this is really really nice restoration once you lay some enamel in there and have that color in the background so we'll let it finish at that point while it's merging i'm looking around and seeing if there's any adjustments i need to make or if i want to change pick a different library <clears throat> we can bring our antagonist back in I can go through my movements just to check everything. So even here, we get another chance to make any adjustments. Um, for example, if I wanted to close this up, I can grab that, close that up a little bit. Let's go next. So as my restoration is taking shape, I have, uh, it really is two separate restorations. I have uh, the teeth. As well as the gingiva. And you'll see once it's done merging what it looks like. And this will take a little bit to merge. Um, it's it's actually now going to merge to the gingiva, the gingiva, the original gingiva, um, the restoration, the abutments, the teeth, uh, separating all of that into its individual parts so we can we can mill. Any questions so far? Uh, no, there's none. Nope. So far.
And once this is complete merging, we'll bring this over into our CAM and we'll be able to mill the substructure and then mill the, the restorations of whatever material we decide. I should bring up the other one while this is merging. I'll do like the cooking show where I bring one up that I had per had prepared earlier. Also, while that's going, let me bring up the, I guess we can discuss the modules right now as well. Um, So for this, what you saw today, um, we were using Artec CR, Implant, MGen, True Smile, uh, and M Smile, but we didn't use that one. But but those are the main ones: Artex, Implant, MGen, and True Smile to be able to utilize uh, what we what we were using today. So if we remove the jaw scan, you have the underside, you have your implant locations. Let's toggle off the framework. There's your restorations on top of your framework. also with your screw channels in the right locations. Uh, Jesse, you want to take over and show the screen with the different modules? Yeah, sure. Hold on for a moment. Okay. Yeah. So that's the that's the React workflow. Um, really, if you like, if you see this one, uh, it's showing the different options of full contour or labial supported. Um, just all the various cutbacks in one restoration. So really, it's like we we, we want to give you guys the options, multiple options to uh, to fabricate these prostheses, and and you can customize that to fit exactly what your 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 workflow is. Can you see my screen? Okay, so did you want to go through the modules or should I? Oh, it, it, yeah, it, well, I can. It doesn't matter. Okay. okay. Um, so if you notice, like I said earlier, we uh, in, uh, Ceramel Mine is the base design software. Uh, implant is what we're using for our implants. Uh, the cutback is what you're. I was showing you the different libraries, and you have the automatic cutback for your uh, mamelons. Um, we also used the virtual articulator right here down there on the screen, the Ceramel Artex. And we use MGen, which is our gingival material creator for uh, hybrids. Um, True Smile as well just shows the color of the teeth. But really, the, those bundles that that you can uh, we, we can do um, to be able to create what you need. What what uh, what's what's what I like about our system and our modules is um, once you purchase those modules, they're yours. You don't pay every year for your modules. Um, you pay a one annual fee for the entire suite. So whether you have four modules or 15, you pay the same annual fee that covers all of that, all of your modules. So I want to thank yeah. you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, we'll be here. Um, and I'll turn it over to Jesse. Yeah, a couple things. Uh but first, I, I did get a message from somebody that was attending that the chat function was uh, wasn't working. So 
I apologize about that. It shows that it's working on our end, but if you do have a question, uh, we will be sending follow-up emails, so feel free to reply to the email, or if you, I'll be showing our contact information shortly so you can reach out to us directly, and we'll make sure to get those questions answered. Um, next thing that I just want to let you guys be aware of is for all these modules, uh, we are offering zero finance options if you're interested, and uh, that's for purchases 5000 and over. We have different terms available. We can even push out the, the payment for six months from now. So if you did want to get familiar with the software right now, well, we all have time. I mean, there is that option. Um, but of course, if you want to wait, you know, we're, we're, we're here for you regardless. Um, and our contact information, that's me on the left, uh, Jesse Zamariba, and it's my phone number and my email. And Holly is also here to help you, Holly Bird, and that's her phone number and her email. Uh, like I said again, like I said before, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always here. We're always available weekends, evenings. It doesn't matter. We're, we're here for you. So, uh, Mo, thank you. And everybody, thank you for attending. I, I appreciate it. And uh, on behalf of a set of professionals, you know, we, we really appreciate that uh, you did spend your time with us today. So, thank you.